Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now this month we're gonna take a look at the energy of November. Is this gonna be a good month? Is this gonna be a better month ahead? What's it gonna be like? Well, I've been taking a look today as I've been putting my notes together for all of the months, for the little mini reports, and I do think this is gonna be a better month than October. I think there are some nice things to look forward to. It depends, it depends what's happening in your birth chart. It really, really depends. We've got Jupiter crossing a Gandanta point. Um, for some people, this can even be good. It, Gandanta isn't always bad. Um, you know, some people, Jupiter's moving in to, to a good, good transit house. So um, for some of you, this is gonna be good. For some people, that Gandanta point, depending if you've got planets nearby or on that axis or any of that, it could be a challenging time. So, um, and we are looking at that early November type time. And that's what I'm going to go through in the mini readings for you. We've got Mercury retrograde, October 31 to 20th November. You know, uh, I think that should be all right. Um, but as I've been working with a lot of you, and before I say uh, how it is for the collective out there that I'm working with, I want to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. It really means a lot to me when one of you subscribe. It's so wonderful to welcome a new person into the community. Thank you so much for joining. Um, you'll find that this is just a really nice place where like minds meet and chat with each other in the comments below. I'm sure you'll find some good friends actually and um, just people who are chilled out and like me we all want to recalibrate our lives to the rhythms of nature you know and um, that's what we're doing when we're looking at the sky it's really cool so back to what's going on I've been working with a lot of you guys and um, this is through coaching, this is through emails. Sometimes people just ask me a, a question, you know, I'm always happy to answer one question. You can pop me an email if you like. Um, I've been working with you guys and I know that a lot of people are quite frustrated or experiencing delays or experiencing, you know, what's going on, why aren't things changing, when are things going to budge, when are things going to move. When is that job going to come through? When is that relationship going to work out? When is there's a lot of all this energy, and um, having patience isn't easy. It's an art. It takes practice. So now's a good time to practice being patient if that's a quality that you want to embody or be able to count on in life. Now is the time to be practicing. Um, how to cultivate patience and um, I do think that this is going to be the case up until I'm just clicking through on my software now and I'm looking at Saturn here 24th of Jan 2020 right it's not far away it's coming so don't worry the times are going to change everything's going to shift and it's going to shift in quite a big way we're looking at it's kind of Jan Feb let's give Saturn a bit of time because you have to give Saturn time uh, you know, he's going to be moving into Capricorn, Jan, Jan, Feb, right? He's a bit slow. You might start feeling it in Feb, but um, you're definitely going to feel a shift then. And it, it's going to be good. I think it's going to be good for the next five years for everyone on the planet. That's what I'm hoping because Saturn's home. You know, he's going to be in Capricorn, he's going to be in Aquarius. This is going to be good. So um, that's what I'm telling myself. That's what I'm believing in. I'm embodying this. And I think it's going to be good, different, better, more positive, more movement. We need the new. We need the new to come in. We need, you know, we need a renaissance on this planet, don't we? We need to be creating and excited again and, and, and doing things. So I think, I think that's coming. And it's a final stretch and a final push with this Saturn Ketu energy. So if you are feeling delay, if you are feeling that you're stuck, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling, when is this gonna change? It's, the change is coming. And we're all gonna experience that. Normally on these monthly reports, I'm gonna bring up my notes, I usually do a little news matchup where I um, look at the news stories, the big news stories that have been happening, and I match it up with what's going on in the sky. Now, it, it's really incredible. Normally I don't watch the news every day, and um, 
but yet I always have news stories and I always have headlines and things to share with you and I can show how it matches up. It's extraordinary. This last month of October, and I'm recording this on October the 29th, I have been watching the news every day, unusually. I don't watch too much news, but I have been watching the news and I don't feel at all inspired to do a news matchup this month. Not at all. It's incredible. What I feel is just stillness and silence and that we need to go deep into that. And this is a time, I think we've got Halloween, is that the 31st? I think it is. I'm not really a Halloween person. I grew up in Australia. We didn't have that. Um, but that it's this is a time where the veil is thin, right? So it's a beautiful time. It's a sacred time. It's a time where we can really, really get really, really still and go very deep. Um, and that can be incredible. And, and, and some of you are going through um, things like heartbreak. Actually, for one of you who's going through heartbreak, I hope you're watching, I, I wrote you an email today, but I forgot to include this note and I've written it on my whiteboard. Um, Simon Amstel, he's a famous comedian here in Britain, and he said that there's joy in authentic experiences like deep sadness, like deep heartbreak. So, you know, if you can really feel that stuff and, and touch it quite deeply, not for long, just just touch it, just and rise back to the top, you know, for air kind of thing. It's sort of that Sagittarius um, Gemini line where you go very deep in Sagittarius and you come up for air in, in Gemini. Um, this is quite a good time to be doing that kind of thing. And what, what are we dealing with here? We are dealing with Jupiter moving into Sagittarius, so that's perfect. If you can, if you can go deep now. So I'm not doing a news matchup. What I'm doing instead, I've never done this before, but I feel inspired to do it. I've got my phone in front of me. You'll see why in a moment. Um, I've just been distracted by a message that's come through. Get rid of that. Uh, I felt inspired to break with convention, completely break with convention. We're not doing a news matchup. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little meditation instead. I thought, why don't we meditate together? Why don't we do just five minutes and I'll take you to zero point. So it's my favorite place to go. Um, I've called it meditation, getting back to zero. That's what I've got on my screen, but I haven't got any notes. I just thought what I'll do is it'll be purely spontaneous. And um, I'm going to set the timer and it's a guided five minutes. So if you would like to do this meditation, um, then join you know get comfortable sit down relax um, if you don't want to do this meditation you don't have to <laughs> you can just skip ahead and watch um, your mini report and I've just got my screen up there and I'm doing all kinds of things so shall we begin and what I might do I'll see if I've got time tomorrow I might even break this meditation out and put it on a web page so you can or if I can create it so you can download it, that'd be really cool. I'll try and I might do that tomorrow. Let's see how I go for time. So I'm going to ring this bell. So I've got um, Insight Timer app on my phone. And this is a really great Insight Timer. It gives you statistics as to, um, so you can look back over the months and see, oh, wow, I've done lots of meditation. Uh, or as the case may be, you can see the months you've missed doing it. I had a pretty good stretch. I think it was... Um, earlier in the year, partly while I was in Australia and partly here. And yeah, I clocked up a lot of, um, clocked up quite a bit of meditation time. So anyway, so let's do this together. So it's just five minutes. Experienced meditators, you might not find this, you know, five minutes is what's five minutes. But um, for those of you who are beginners or new or don't do much meditation, um, this could be a really nice five minutes. And I'll take you to a zero place at the two, two minute 50 mark and then we'll come out so yeah I'll guide you through and I'm going to have my eye on the time so you don't have to so I've got my eye on the time you can relax know that I'm here and that within five minutes I will ask you to come back and you can listen to your mini report so if you like this kind of thing, I can um, do this. I figured this would be nice to do while the veil is thin and, and at this particular point in time. Because if I was to do a news matchup, it's not an appropriate time. It's, mm, it's too much information. 
air coming through. It, it wouldn't be right. There's information overload. And um, I'll tell you something else. I listened to Michaela Sheldon. She's an amazing channel, and she talks about that in her latest video, that there's too much information coming through. I think that's quite right. So let's do some meditation. Okay. I'm going to press start, and we shall begin. Hopefully you're seated still somewhere. Maybe you're lying down. And when you feel ready, take in a nice deep breath. Let your lungs fill completely. And then pause for a moment. And let everything go. Let it all go. You can take in another deep, deep breath. And gather your thoughts, gather all your thoughts, gather the day, gather the tension, gather everything that's been going on. And then when you feel ready, let it all go. And as you listen to my voice, start to settle in and feel your entire body. Start from the head and we go down, down the neck, the shoulders. The arms, your hands, start to feel the rest of the rest of your body, your waist, your hips, top of the legs, the calves your feet. And as you relax, become so still that the only movement you can feel is the beating of your heart. See if you can get that still. that that's the only thing you feel. And rest in that place of zero movement and total stillness. Now that you've found that place, you can start to come back. Up into your mind. See if you can feel the energy that surrounds your head. As you breathe in and out. And as we've now just got another 40 odd seconds to go, I'm going to say any time you feel like it. Come back into your awareness. 
come back into the room and whenever it feels right to you you can open your eyes in another 10 seconds the bell will sound was relaxing. We just touched the stillness in five minutes. Very short. I normally meditate each day for about 15 minutes and I find that's usually about the right amount of time for me to go down, hang out in zero and come back up again. So it was very brief, <laughs> but we did it. So I hope that was a nice addition to today's video. I haven't done that before, but um, I did get a comment, I think it was last month, one of you said that I should do meditation videos. I do actually have a series of meditation videos that you can listen to at the bottom. Um, if you just click on the show more description thingy, click on that and there's um, a meditation per planet which has been designed to help you embody the starlight of that planet. So if you have a problem planet, let's say you've got one that's debilitated or combust or there's something that's not quite working for you with that planet, hop into one of those meditations and um, see how you go because they are quite useful. And uh, I listen to them as well. Sometimes I must listen to them some more. I haven't for a little while. I'll get back into it myself. All right, I think I'm going to start the mini reports now. So putting the phone away. Don't need the phone. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do, get rid of the phone. <laughs> um, okay, let's begin. So Aries Moon, Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. We're going to take a look at your month ahead. Now, on the 5th of November, we've got Jupiter crossing over into your ninth house. What kind of a transit will this be for you? So we're going from the 8th to the 9th. So it's Jupiter's crossing at Gandanta point. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, I've got a note here, could be turmoil. It's a strong word, I know. But I mean, we do have a Gandanta point here. Um, and I'm saying as you leave some relationship issue behind, or something to do with family, other people, um, could even be something relating to the concept of dependence or being dependent. And that's that eighth house realm where Jupiter is. Um, Jupiter is moving into a much better place, a much, much better place. So this is good. So you might, there might be before 5th November, there might be a bit of problem to do with eighth house type matters. But as Jupiter moves into that ninth house, this is great. This is Jupiter moving into a much better place for you. And he's sticking around there for a while. So this energy isn't going away anytime soon. So you're one of the lucky ones who's getting a good Jupiter transit. I'm very happy. Um, this could be good for higher learning, guru, teachers, wisdom, father, work, travel, all these kind of things. You being the guru, maybe it's time for you to step into being the guru. Maybe you need to share your wisdom with the world. Um, Maybe you might find a new guru. Maybe this will be that time. Now Saturn and Ketu are still here for the next um, good couple of months, two, three months at least. So there are some heavy energies as part of this mix. Um, could be making things a bit, a bit tough there. I think we are all stuck with Ketu Saturn for a little while. So that, that's just how it's going to be. Um, 12th November, we've got full moon in Aries. So this is your moon. This is really great. This is Bharani Nakshatra. Um, and I'm saying in regards to this full moon that it's we're, we're going to have some kind of completion on something to do with your feminine side or something to do with your feminine energy. And that applies to men just as much as it applies to women. So that's great because if you've had challenges, um, with your own feminine side. It could even be um, the feminine side of the body, 
right? So we've got the, which one is which? My mind has gone blank. The, which one's more yang? It is the right side that's more yang. It is, isn't it? And the left side, yes. Is, yes, it is actually, yeah, because I have a lot of problems on my right side. Um, so you can tell, you know, where in your body do you have the prob like problems or I always get shoulder pain on the right side. So, um, you know, your body will tell you, right? So who knows, you could be completing something to do with physical ailment on the um, left side of your body. And because this is happening in Aries, uh, it could be the physical body. So you might want to look at, you know, ailments on the left side of your body. This could be a time where that completes, possibly. Um, this is happening in your first house. So I'm saying a massive culmination or completion to do with your feminine side. Could be the feminine side of your physical body. Could be a lot of things like that. So big time for you, Aries, uh, Moon. And a good time. It's not bad. It's not a bad transit. So I'm very happy for you. So thank you so much for joining. And... We are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 5th of November, we've got Jupiter crossing over into your 8th house. What does that mean? Uh, this is pretty big. Jupiter is crossing a Gandanta point. Gandanta point is where we have fire and water. And, and the combination of those two can be, oh, it can be quite something. So this is the untying of a karmic knot in relation to your spouse right this is big if you're single okay spouse it could be the space where your spouse is if you're hoping to let someone new in right um that space will be being cleared or cleaned right for you so that's pretty amazing hopefully it is you know and and you might want to appoint someone to help with that or whatever um so the untying of a karmic knot in relation to your spouse for women in particular, because this is Jupiter's movement, right? And Jupiter is the husband for women. Um, Jupiter crosses into the eighth house, which is still about, yes, which is still about spouse. So from the seventh to the eighth, I mean, we're still looking at spouse here, but not just spouse. We're looking at spouse, other people's money, other people connected with the spouse, right? In-laws, um, that's very much here. Uh, issues around dependence, right? You might be having to be dependent and you're a very independent person, okay? So something along those lines. Um, this can include emergencies or trouble, yes. I mean, that's possible. But again, it depends on where your planets are situated and, and what's being touched and tapped and aspected and all that. Um, Saturn and Ketu are, are here as well, making things a bit heavy, okay? So we know that. We've been talking about that for quite a while. Uh, Relationship-wise, I've got a note here, the 24th could be a nice day for you, depending on your natal chart. Jupiter and Venus is conjunct. Um, 12th November, full moon in Aries. So what is this about? Parani Nakshatra. So I'm saying that this completion, this culmination of a full moon, um, has something to do with your feminine side. And this is happening in the 12th house. So you could experience um, some completion in regards to isolation. Interesting. Uh, 12th house matters. So yes, isolation, escape, your spirituality. Um, spirituality. But yeah, I mean, imagine that. I mean, if, if look, it, it's that kind of thing where if you are single and hoping to meet someone, then this could be, apologies, Taurus Moon, we got cut off. And I think I was saying, I think I was in the middle of your portion. Um, was I saying something about if you're single, this could be a good time. Some clearing could happen. Somebody new could come in. I think I was saying that. So there is a bit of that going on. Um, let's have a look at this. So I would have mentioned 5th November, Jupiter crosses over into your 8th house. Um, 12th, I said, yeah, 24th could be a very nice day for you. Venus, Jupiter conjunction could be lovely, depending on where things are placed in your chart, that one is. So um, I'm not, it could be good. Um, and then we've got 12th November, full moon in Aries, Barani Nakshatra, completion on something to do with your feminine side. So this for you is happening in your 12th house. So you could experience completion in regards 
to something to do with your spirituality something to do with ah uh, yes isolation escape your spirituality i think i said all of that didn't i and that's where i was saying could be an end to your isolation right could be completion of that could be really big okay so um for you taurus moon there's a lot going on um yeah i've got a note here if life has been alone or quiet it could be time for that to change so um, the other thing is there is Mercury retrograde happening October 31st to 20th November. I forgot to mention that for Aries. Whoops. Well, I did mention it at the start, so it doesn't matter. Um, but Taurus Moon, it's been a pleasure as always. Uh, I wish you well. You know, hang in there regarding Saturn and Ketu. If you're feeling delayed or blocked, hang in there. Um, Jan 24th, 2020, things are really going to change. So thanks for joining Taurus Moon. We are now going to welcome... Gemini Moon, Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, it is an interesting month ahead. We've got on the 5th of November, Jupiter crosses over into your seventh house. So Jupiter is crossing a Gandanta point, okay? And this is water and fire, steam, that black soot can come up, you know, it can be really full on. Um, this could be turmoil possibly as you leave an issue to do with your work, your service in the world, um, anything to do with health, perhaps ongoing health stuff or court cases, that kind of sixth house kind of things, right? Um, so Jupiter is moving into a much better place for you. This is fantastic. This is good news. Um, this will help. So this transit will help with your business if you're self-employed, um, give a boost to partnerships of any kind, be good for your spouse, for your love life, right? So this could be a beautiful transit. Um, but Saturn and Ketu are here, okay, so we have to bear that in mind. Um, and they're not too thrilled to be there in the seventh house. Um, it's not that they're not thrilled, it's just that they're doing heavy duty important work. Probably digging up stuff and, you know, um, clearing things and there's a lot going on. So Saturn and Ketu energies are heavy, but Jupiter's coming into the mix and giving things a boost. Jupiter is, loves to be in this area. So this is great. This is good news. 12th November, there's a full moon in Aries. That's Barani Nakshatra. So completion on something to do with your feminine side. That could be quite big. Um, this is happening in your 11th house. So this, I think, I mean, you think about the 11th house being wish fulfillment. I think this could be to do with romance. It could be, um, could be offering some beautiful sensual energy for you to enjoy. How amazing. So Gemini Moon, you're very lucky uh, to have that. And... Um, Take it easy and rest if you need to as well, okay? And I probably say that every month, but <laughs> uh, this month in particular, we all need to do that a bit more. Um, there's also Mercury retrograde happening from October 31st to 20th November, so just bear that in mind. Uh, again, I don't see a problem with Mercury retrograde, but um, it's just something to know, okay? So thank you so much for joining Gemini Moon. We are now gonna welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, um, the 5th of November, we've got Jupiter crossing over into your sixth house. Okay, so what does this mean? Um, Jupiter is crossing a Gandanta point. Now, we know that Gandanta point is where water and fire are, and Jupiter crossing over this, you know, steam can be generated, um, that black soot type stuff can happen it can be ugly <laughs> right but it can be very good people rise in that fire too so is this going to be good for you got to note here could be turmoil as you leave something to do with your creative projects or speculative ventures got a note here not a great time to move money um, if you can avoid moving money this is a good thing if you can take time wait for Gandanta to pass so we're looking about mid-november um when it comes to to money and that's big money if, you know if you can avoid um, doing that jupiter is moving into an area that may bring challenges for you this is in terms of work career service to the world your health um saturn and ketu are here yep these are heavy energies that could be making things tough yeah, okay, so it's it's not a brilliant transition for you, Cancer Moon. You know, Jupiter's kind of moving from one challenging place to another slightly challenging place. Um, it's not particularly ideal. And you've got Saturn and Ketu in the mix doing their heavy-duty work that they've been doing all year. So 
it's I don't have anything too exciting to report but let's have a look here 12th November full moon in Aries Bharani Nakshatra this is offering some beautiful energy this is completion to do with something to do with your feminine side so we've all got feminine side whether we're male or female um, you know and for you it's happening in the 10th house okay so this could be a massive culmination or completion to do with your feminine side it has a work connection this could be to do with how receptive you are to new ideas how receptive you are to praise um, how receptive you are to the feedback that others in your work environment are giving you okay that's something to really concentrate on and, and just to take a look at just take take a look at where am I with that you know don't judge it don't label it just look just observe without judging so cancer moon it's not looking like a bad month I mean it, it's challenging still but um, but it's not too bad so hang in there hang in there we're all gonna have a better time come Jan next year don't worry okay Leo moon Leo moon welcome thank you so much for joining now we're taking a look at the month ahead and on the 5th of November we've got Jupiter crossing over into your fifth house Jupiter's crossing a Gandanta point so this is where we've got water and fire um, the houses are you know water house and a firehouse and it can just get a little bit messy so um, as Jupiter crosses this Gandanta point you might have an issue to do with your home life domestic scene property deals anything to do with that fourth house there there might be some issues there but Jupiter's moving into a much much better place you're one of the lucky ones you're getting a good transit this time um, so this could give you some extra juice I would say some good energy some good energy uh, to do with relationships to do with love romance creativity children beautiful time um, Saturn and Ketu are here okay these are heavy energies <sighs> aren't we tired of these two I'm telling you now I can't wait for them to go their separate ways it's been full on um, these are heavy energies that could be making life a little bit tough in that area in that fifth house area so you might be trying to be romantic with somebody and, and yet there's some heavy tough thing going on in the background so just be aware of that but don't don't let that dampen your spirit and don't let that um, be a problem uh, 12th November what have we got going on here full moon in Aries okay so this is Bharani Nakshatra you are completing on something to do with your feminine side hmm how amazing now this applies to men and women um, what would this be your ninth house this could be to do with how receptive you are to guidance or advice in your life this could be to do with I mean say for example how receptive you are to new systems of thought um, you know different realms of intellectual endeavor right it could be um, how receptive are you to different people and, and different beliefs so this is something that's being looked at this could be to do with your work as well so this could be how receptive you are this could even be receptive yes it's your feminine side but it could be to do with masculine energies because ninth house is father as well so are you open to receiving guidance from your dad whether he's on the planet or not right so Leo Moon it looks like a pretty good month ahead um, I'm gonna leave it with you I think it's I think you're lucky you're one of the lucky ones you've got a good transit here so I hope you enjoy that amongst the heaviness okay so it's still going on but don't worry all right thanks so much Leo Moon we are now going to welcome Virgo Moon Virgo Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 5th of November Jupiter crosses over into your fourth house hmm. what does this mean so we've got um, Jupiter crossing a Gandanta point it could be turmoil as you leave an issue to do with your confidence your friends your peers your hobbies how you present yourself to the world even how you're perceived um, Jupiter is moving into your domestic scene so your attention will be needed at home um, might be needed to help with your mother as well I think we've talked about this before haven't we Virgo moon um, you might have property dealings to attend to again it's a lot of more of the same because Saturn and Ketu are there and we have spoken about that um, these are heavy energies Saturn and Ketu it's still going on these are heavy energies that could be making life tough 
as well in this area. On the 12th of November, full moon in Aries. So we've got Bharani Nakshatra. Um, th this could offer a completion on something to do with your feminine side. So this is happening in your eighth house. It could be a completion on how well you receive energy from others. So receiving energy from your spouse, from your family, um, from the people that you care about. Other, so in-laws. Okay, let me be specific. It's eighth house. It's your spouse's family, most likely. So Virgo Moon, there's a lot there. It is it is a busy month. It's going to be a full month, possibly. It's going to be a, a month where you might need... Um, you might need to rest a bit, so don't hesitate to take time out if you can. Virgo Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 5th of November, Jupiter crosses over into your third house. Jupiter is crossing a Gandanta point, so this is quite a good transit um, in the second house. But there could be some turmoil as you leave an issue to do with your family, possibly, or your wealth or savings or something to do with your resources. There could be some turmoil or chaos or a little bit, you know, something you have to deal with. Jupiter is moving into your third house of courage, peers and media. So it'll be a time to focus on how you present yourself um, to others, possibly. A time to remove blocks. Um, a time to remove blocks in terms of what's standing in the way of you being courageous. Okay, if you're struggling with that, if you haven't been courageous, if you know um, you're holding back on something, Jupiter might be able to provide you that extra wisdom and that extra energy that you need. Um, Saturn and Ketu are here, and these are heavy energies that could be digging up things in that area as well, which I'm sure we've spoken about over the months. That is ongoing, but that's going to separate soon. So that, that's coming to an end now. Um, 12th November, we've got full moon in Aries. So this is Bharani Nakshatra. Uh, completion on something to do with your feminine side. Because this is happening in your seventh house, this could be um, how receptive you are to your partner or your business partner or your spouse, you know. It's a really interesting energy, this. We've also got Mercury retrograde happening October 31st to 20th November. So that's another something to bear in mind. Um, but on the whole, I mean, it's kind of looking more of the same, Libra Moon. There's nothing too exciting I have to report here for you. But stay tuned. There's always a better transit coming up. So thank you, Libra Moon, for joining. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. What do we have here? I think I actually have some good news for you. I was putting the notes together and I was like, yay, Scorpio Moon needs some good news. I have some. So um, 5th of November, we've got Jupiter crossing over into your second house. Jupiter's crossing a Gandanta point. You know, we've got fire and water there, so there could be some turmoil as you leave an issue to do with your sense of self or your health. Okay, yeah, first to the second house there. Um, but we've got Jupiter moving into second from the moon. This is a beautiful transit. So yay, you've got some good energy coming your way. This is a good transit. This is positive energy in regards to family, wealth, um, time to treat yourself to, to something possibly. Maybe are you able to um, spend a bit of money to splurge on something for you? You know, are you able to do that? And it doesn't have to be big, okay? It can be... Um, I don't know, it could, be, it could be a new nail polish. Look at this. I have this, and I don't remember where I got it from, but I'm going to treat myself to some of that tomorrow. So <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be extravagant, right? But treat yourself. Do something nice. Um, it can be something very small, but just feel the luxurious vibes of something small is my suggestion to you. Um, 12th November, we've got full moon in Aries. Okay, what's going on there? Yes, 12th November, full moon in Aries. That's in Bharani Nakshatra. You are completing on something to do with your feminine side. So because this is happening in your sixth house, I want to ask you the question, how receptive are you to taking a stand, right? Or to drawing a line in the sand on issues that are important in your reality? So what do I mean by this? 
how receptive are you to having, say there's an issue in your life, how receptive are you to saying, do you know what, I'm drawing a line in the sand, I don't need to experience that anymore. I think you've got some supportive energy to be able to, to draw a line under the sand of something that you just don't want to, you know, you're just like, I've, I've done enough of that. I've, I've done enough of being treated this way or whatever it is. There could be the potential to, to say, you know, no more of that. You know? um, and it's not as simple as just saying no more of that because you've really got to not do it to yourself. And that's a, that can be a big, a complicated task. I think last month I had one of you ask, what can Scorpio Moon do specifically? We need to do's, we need how's, we need... Um, I'm going to give you a how. So this point that I'm talking about, being willing to draw a line under the sand of something you, you don't want to experience anymore. But I'm saying that you've got to not treat yourself that way. And it's gets quite complicated. The person to go to for this is Byron Katie. Okay, go and check out the work of Byron Katie. She has these four questions. In fact, I've got her... Oh, I'm just going to... Have I got it here? Yes, I do. Oh, I never do this, do I? Here we go. <laughs> um, you probably see my stripy trousers just now. Whoops. <laughs> um, I have this, the four questions. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Hang on, let's just tap there. There we go. Four questions. You've got to get involved in these four questions. This is gold. Basically, she gets you to question your thinking. Is it true? This could be perfect with this Bharani um, nakshatra. In happening in the sixth house, this could be very, very good. So you ask these four questions on a thought. Is it true? Are you sure? How do you react when you believe that thought? And who would you be without the thought? These are the questions. Get stuck into this stuff. It's absolutely amazing. Scorpio Moon, I'm going to... Say goodbye. I know you're still inside Asati. I give you a lot of positivity and strength and encouragement to keep going because you're being polished like a diamond. You're going to come out amazing. So um, thank you, Scorpio Moon. And we're now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. It's a big month. It's another big month. And what do we have here okay let's take a look at the notes 5th november we've got jupiter crossing over into your first house so jupiter's crossing a gandanta point this could be a bit of there could be a bit of turmoil here as you leave an issue to do with your deep sense of spirituality escapism spiritual retreat so as you're leaving that as jupiter's leaving that anyway um, it'll now be time to focus on your whole sense of self in every single way. So this, we're looking at health, we're looking at who you are in the world, we're looking at um, hopefully long-term strategizing as to who you want to be. Okay, so now with Jupiter entering this area of your first house, I think he's giving you the energy to strategize long-term. That when you get out of this Sati Sati, so we're looking at, what we're looking at maybe three years for you a little while I should know but um, <laughs> not good at calculating off the top of my head but it's a little while you've got some time here yet um, think long term just just brainstorm just strategize just um, just enjoy that contemplative energy that's coming here from Jupiter Saturn and Ketu are there as well it, it's heavy this is heavy it, it, it's a bit full on um, so I haven't got anything brilliant to report for you, unfortunately, but um, hang in there. Your, pol your mirror is being polished and rubbed, as Rumi says, so you're, you're going to be well, either a very shiny mirror. What did I just say to Scorpio Minute? I said they're going to be a diamond. You're going to be a diamond too. Of course you are. Um, let's have a look at this. 12th November, we've got a full moon in Aries. So this is Bharani Nakshatra. So this is completion on something to do with your feminine side. Wow, that's big. Uh, so And this is happening in your fifth house. So my question here, big question. I always have the big questions for you guys, Sagittarius Moon. How receptive are you to romance? Right, big question. Um, and I don't mean that in a romantic partner way. I've got a note here: all creative ideas. It's creativity, you know, because when you're being creative, it's like the universe is kind of romancing you, right? It's giving you ideas. It's feeding you. It's saying, hey, how about this? And you know, maybe you want to give that out into the world somehow. So it's not about having a partner. Um, it might be more about, you know, allowing yourself to, to 
experience beauty um, and be shown by the universe that you are beautiful pretty amazing stuff Sagittarius moon I could go on but I'm gonna have to move on to Capricorn moon so thank you so much for joining I know you're inside this out hang in there it's not long to go okay just hang in there um, you are being polished into a diamond I know it so thank you Sagittarius moon and we're now going to meet Capricorn moon so Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining now on the 5th of November we've got Jupiter crossing over into your 12th house okay so Jupiter's crossing a Gandanta point now we know that Gandanta point is where fire and water meet and it gets a bit messy it's not always a good thing um, Jupiter has enjoyed being in your 11th house from the moon but is now going into a place of spiritual and sacred retreat this could be necessary for you um, seeing since you are in Sadhu Sati Saturn and Ketu are here they're doing their heavy duty work of you know overhauling and, and reconfiguring and they're doing a lot together um, I've got no here heavy energies that could be making this area tough for you um, 12th November we've got full moon in Aries this is Bharani Nakshatra completion on something to do with your feminine side so fourth house um, how receptive are you to guidance about your home environment hmm. okay so this is the full moon even small things like if someone asks you to relax can you relax yeah absolutely Capricorn moon can you relax can you <laughs> it's a big question so with Bharani Nakshatra completion on something to do with your feminine side the other tip I'll give you because we're looking at fourth house and relax relaxation and home and domestic pleasures and all that kind of thing I also want you to look at your physical body so we've got the feminine side which is the left side and we've got the right side is probably opposite because of camera and all that but like the right side is the masculine side so if you have physical ailments on the left side of your body your feminine side is in need of some nurturing I always typically get my ailments my shoulder pain for example on the right side um, probably I'm overusing my yang energy I'm doing too much so which is true I, but I don't feel like I'm doing much anyway uh, Capricorn moon it's it's looking like you know I think for everybody better times are ahead when Saturn goes into Capricorn that's coming for everybody so hang in there um, we're all gonna get better times soon so it's not too far it's another stretch but you'll be okay I wish you all the best Capricorn moon I wish you much strength much positivity and beautiful starlight to help get you through this Sadisati phase that you're in Take care, Capricorn Moon. We'll see you next time. And we're going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, on the 5th of November, we've got Jupiter crossing over into your 11th house. Wow. Um, what does this mean? So, Jupiter's crossing a Gandanta point. It could be some turmoil as you leave, some issue to do with your career. Um, but this is ultimately a great transit for you yes leaving from the 10th into the 11th this is good oh, you are so lucky because I'm not able to give good news to everybody this time so you're one of the lucky ones I'm giving you good news um, Jupiter is in the 11th so wish fulfillment is possible for you how amazing make the most of this transit till Jan Feb 2020 you've got another little stretch to go and then things are going to change so um, Saturn and Ketu are here these are heavy energies these could be making things challenging these two being together so do watch out for that that's ongoing we know that energy now 12th November full moon is in Aries so this is Bharani Nakshatra this is completion on something to do with your feminine side um, this is happening in your third house so my question to you is how receptive are you to feedback from your peers that's a really big question do you allow your friends to have their opinion without it hurting you okay can your friends be really honest with you it's a really big question right um, so it's about receptivity it's about completing something to do with the feminine side who knows maybe something along those lines will come up into your world so Aquarius moon I want to thank you so much for joining I can see the camera is just about to cut so I'm going to wrap up
and I'm going to save this file. Thank you so much for joining Aquarius Moon. Pisces Moon, Pisces Moon, welcome. Sorry, the camera just got cut. It's not going to cut in the middle of yours. I'm so happy about that. Let's take a look at what's going on. So 5th of November, we've got Jupiter crossing over into your 10th house. Um, Jupiter's crossing a Gandanta point. This can get messy because we've got water and fire and that when a planet transits over that, it steam, and there can be black stuff that comes out. It can be terrible. Is it going to be bad for you? I hope not. Let me have a look here. Um, crossing over into your 10th house. You know, it's, I don't think it's going to be too bad, um, but it's not the best. I don't have the most brilliant news to give you. I was just with Aquarius Moon. I had great news to give them. Um, but for you, I mean, this transit's okay. It just looks like there could be a little bit of chaos maybe as you... It doesn't have to be. That's I've been through many Gandantas and there's been no chaos. So don't worry, there doesn't have to be. It also depends on where planets are in your natal chart, okay? That's a big factor in all this. But um, there could be chaos or something as you leave an issue to do with gurus, teachers, wisdom, beliefs, and as you enter into more focus on your career, okay? That is important for you now. You are going to be more focused on your career. Um, but I am also going to say, because this is heavy Ketu energy in your 10th house, there is a lot. And I'm going to say if you can jump into that Rahu house, if you can jump into the 4th house and you know, nurture yourself as well. Don't forget to nurture yourself because I think what's happening is there could be a lot of heavy feelings around career and what is my purpose in the world and what am I meant to be doing and God, this is so slow and why is nothing changing? And I think things could be a little bit like that for you. Um, it could be a bit full on. So I'm going to say hop into that Rahu house, hop into the domestic scene, hop into nurturing yourself as often as you can hop into recharging your batteries as often as you can uh, over the next month. Get ready for 2020. 2020 is going to be good for you, okay? It's coming, so don't worry. Um, but at the moment, Saturn and Ketu are still here. We've been dealing with them the whole year. It's been tough for everybody. Um, I've definitely felt it too. It hasn't been easy. Um, these are heavy energies. It could be making this area tough, but don't worry. It's, it's, you're going to pass that soon. 12th November we've got full moon in Aries, um, Bharani Nakshatra, so this is completion on something to do with your feminine side. This is happening in your second house. So my question to you is how receptive are you to guidance from your family? Perhaps that area is going to get a bit of a restructure um, as well actually, yeah. But with this full moon, I mean, this could be very beautiful, this could be very healing for you. And it could be healing something to do with your feminine side, could be healing something to do with your receptivity towards family. So Pisces Moon, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you for joining. I don't know if anyone's left from all the other signs. This is our little Pisces Moon party. We always have a good time here, don't we? Um, but thank you. Thank you so much for being part of this channel. Um, look out for more videos, they are coming soon, I'm creating all the time and um, I want to thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.